Hear this truth, people of God. It is an encounter with the revelation of the truth that guarantees triumph in life. A discovery of God's secrets will make you live in abundance and influence. Helpless. You cannot discover the truth from God's word and not overcome trials of life. Lack and want is not your portion. So it's not my portion. Abundant life is your birthright. But it takes your access to God's word to make prosperity a reality. God said, I am come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Is that true? The Amplified said, overflow. In 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 9, the Bible declares, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That through, though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. That through his poverty, you might be what? Hear this. Prosperity is one of the fundamental benefits of redemption. But how do you assess it? How do you what? Assess it. Now, I'm going to share with you how does love for God connect you to prosperity? Because you are talking about love. How does love for God connect you to what? How does it connect you to prosperity? How do you connect? There's a connecting point. There's a what? Between love and prosperity. Now listen carefully. What you need to know is this. The voltage used in American electricity is different from the voltage used in Britain. There are sockets from America if you bring it to Nigeria, as you plug it, the equipment will blow. If you don't use a step down, they don't use the same power source. If you buy something from America, you must know whether it's, if you just plug it to your own source here, it will blow. Because the connection is wrong. So in the kingdom of God, many people have connected positive to positive. And they are just blowing the equipment left hand. <laughs> they connect negative to this one, the two. two. You see this thing I brought, you see smoke. If equipment has ever blown in your hand, you see smoke coming out. You say, oh, what is this this is spoiled. He didn't spoil. He didn't know what to connect. You connected it wrongly. You connected it wrongly. So many of us think that the things we are doing is what will bring prosperity. You have connected what? Wrongly. Some of people have fasted to prosper. That a young man was fasting, life story, and carried 50 kg jerrican and had any after that. He went and lifted the jerrican in the midst of dry fasting. He said he wants to prosper. He nearly died. Somebody was fasting in locked his door and died there. He didn't know that they don't fast to get money. <laughs> he went to heaven but connected wrongly. Now, okay, you don't know anything. You're innocent. Your hands are clean. You put hands in the wicked wire. What will happen? It will shock you. It will kill you. It will say that you don't know. So many Christians are putting their hands ignorantly to naked because they think that this step they are taking is right. No, Ignorance is the biggest instrument the devil uses against you. His biggest instrument is what? Ignorance. He said, my people, for lack of knowledge. So most of us, we think that prosperity, <laughs> we apply the read to. We go from deliverance to deliverance. We go from church to church. Our family, the way we are suffering, eh? Want to do family deliverance? Say that as a continue. Continue deliverance, you'll be poor. Deliverance does not bring you out of poverty. It's knowledge. How does love for God connect you to what? Prosperity. Number one, have a heart for God. Have a what? Have a heart for God. 
But what did I say? The foundational pillar to a world of prosperity in the kingdom of God is genuine heart for God. Matthew 22, 36 to 40. A young ruler came to Jesus and said, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. You see the heart first. You know why? Anywhere your heart is, that's where your body will move to. True? If your heart is in a relationship, your body moved there. If your heart is in football, when it's time for football, true? Anywhere God says he wants to know the foundation, along with the heart, and with the soul, and with all the mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is according to you, that shall love thy neighbor as well. That's it. On all this hang all the laws and the prophecies. Every blessing you stand to enjoy in this kingdom of Christ is built on the foundation of love. When you love God, it will show. And he will show you all things. How many things? Those who love God, he shows them things. May God show you what others can see. He said, my father has revealed them to me. John chapter 5, verse 20. Secret things are revealed to those who love God. Is that clear, sir? A heart for God is the cheapest way to make a mark on the earth. You must win the heart of God to gain access to the secrets that makes for prosperity. A heart. What did? Listen. The moment you have a heart for God, God shows you secrets. God shows you what? Secret. Now listen. Many people think that the secret of God is for those who rigorously read. Listen. I've come to realize that rigorous reading does not make God reveal his secret. The secret of God revealed to those who love him. You can study more than the studious person. And God will not reveal any secret to you if you don't love him. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. He has entered the heart of man for that what? This is what I pray for that what? And said, look at verse 10. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit, he does not reveal until verse 9 is in place. If you love him, he shows you things others can't see. And success is more of revealed secrets. So here. God will reveal secrets to you. So prosperity is not, oh, just give him money. He revealed. Now, Job, the richest man in his time, said, as it was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. Job 29 verse 4. And Job chapter 1 verse 3, he said, and he was the greatest man. The greatest man will emerge as I'm talking. You can't win his heart and remain a low person on the earth. When God was speaking about the church in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 5, he said, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto the will of God. He said, my son, give me what? The heart. Proverbs 23 verse 26. So your heart first before giving your material money. Do you understand how it goes? First word. Your heart. Before the money. So money is not the first thing. What, do you, what is the first thing? My heart. So if my heart is not for God, forget it. That's the, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. So when your heart is there, then everything in you begin to flow in that direction. So here. So the heart of the matter is a matter of the heart. For God, the world before giving. So if love is not the foundation, you will be struggling to give. John 3, 16. We give the authenticity and the validity of our society of our love which we claim to have by giving. By what? If you love God, giving will not be a problem. It just flows. Just what? Because kingdom wealth is for distribution of accumulation. It's a child that which I reach in this world that they will not be high, that they not certain riches, but be willing to what? Communicate and be willing to distribute. If you don't, First Timothy 6, 17 to 19, he said that they may have what? Treasures in heaven. So here. That when the time will come, they will escape the things happening in the world. So here. Now, let me show you a typical example in the Bible. Why you know that the heart for God matters a lot. A man called David. 
God said to the man David, he said, David, don't build my house. I want your son to build it for social reason. And David said, you don't want me to build, but I love you. And in First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 3, and David said, David said, I set my love towards the house of God. Because I have set my affection. The word affection means what? To the house of my God. I have of my own proper good. So anywhere you see giving, first foundation is what? Love. It is love that precedes giving. I understand the Bible. It is not giving first. The foundation is what? Anywhere you see person who freely give, first thing that the person has is what? David loved God, giving became number two. God so loved the world, giving became number two. Do you understand how it is? And Solomon loved the Lord, giving became. David the loves God, and giving became. Giving is not the first thing to prosper. What is the first thing? Love. So if you don't understand love, you'll be struggling to give. So I hear. David gave all that he had to God. In first Chronicles, there, if you read one to five, may you follow his example in the name of Jesus. So if you do love God like David, you get this just like who? He was the only mortal man celebrated after 3,000 years in the history of mankind. They had the celebration of David after 3,000 years. That man loved God. He went to church as a king 10 times a day. How many times? You saw that most more people can't come to church even for one month. The wealthiest, most respected king on earth he was going to church ten times a day. Said so three times a day do I pray. Seven times a day do I praise. So he was getting up from his throne, going. Do you understand now? The temple is right here. When you read First Chronicle, chapter twenty-nine, one to five, you see he won the heart of God. May you win God's heart. Just like David won God's heart and enjoy prosperity, you will enjoy it. May you set your heart to trade with the truth, and supernatural prosperity shall be your portion. The second man in the Bible is Solomon. Is who? Solomon, his son. In 1 Kings 3, if you read 3 and 4, and Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the status of David's father. He was not struggling because he saw his father doing it. Is that clear? He didn't struggle. His father only he sacrificed in verse 4. And the king went to Gibeon to what? Sacrifice there. That was a great high place. A thousand. He was not struggling to give because love was at the foundation. Am I able to pass something to you? Listen, it is not giving first. The love has to be what? Foundation. Otherwise, you'll be struggling to give. The reason many cannot give is not because they don't have, it's because they don't love. <laughs> Let me be very practical. Do you know you don't struggle to give to who you love? The reason why you are saving today now, if they say keep offering, you are struggling. It's not because you don't have money. It's because you don't love God. It's right here. So it's not the money first. It's the love first. So develop yourself to love God and giving will become just, not, it just flows. It's right here. It's a lesson. I pray you have understanding. So Solomon access to kingdom wealth. The teaspoon was gold. He stick up gold. Everything in Solomon's house, gold. He was killing cows and goats for each day in hundreds for people to eat. This man was rich, but he never prayed for money. Never prayed in the Bible for money. The Bible said, and Solomon loved the Lord. Exactly. The God told Solomon, he said, I have given you money you have not asked for. Listen, I'm not blowing my trumpet. I have not prayed for money from 1997. By law, I got a revelation that no man can prosper without giving. But that giving must be the foundation of love. And in 1997, my first offering to a particular source was 50 naira. Was what? 1997. By 2020, the same source from my own source, I gave three point something million dollars. That is how God lives a man when you walk in love. When you walk in what? I didn't say naira dollars. By love. By what? By love. I'm not preaching theory. I'm preaching 50 naira. So don't mind where you are. Just love God. I'm teaching you what I have to do with this guy. 
I have passed through poverty and walk in poverty. Just love God. Poverty will just leave you. It will run like a madman. No, when you can't anoint a mad people run. When you know how to love God, poverty will look at you and say, No! Have you ever met a madman when you are anointed? He will run in his madness. And come back and say, Madness, don't go. Please settle down with this truth. Church, hear this truth. Oh. If you don't know it, you don't know it. The earlier you know it, what? I'm telling you because if you don't know it, oh, you don't know it. There's no suppose way here. When your giving is love motivated, it connects you to heavenly prosperity and supply. You will get there in the name of Jesus. Something about love is that it makes you give without struggle. Without what? So. And let me say this to you. God is not in need. Neither is he depending on any of us. He depends solely on himself. Get excited to give in love and do it cheerfully. I'm telling you this truth because poverty is not God's will. Hello. Listen, I don't care the things people are talking in town. Let God be true and every man a liar. Romans 3 verse 4. I'm telling you because I've seen poverty. Poverty is not good though. I'm, look, for me to be teaching like this, poverty is not good. I have seen this that poverty is, is wickedness. I wish I can just some people one day. I say, you mean you've been in this church for four years, you can't hear what I'm teaching? I'm, I'm, I teach because I, I'm this that poverty and I know poverty makes you look stupid. It makes you to be, look, I'll tell you the consequence of poverty. Say so you won't go there. I'm teaching you because I don't care the gimmicks in town. People are talking about minority prosperity teachers. They don't give what I give. But I am not teaching theory. A great man of God said he has a ministry of giving. He was talking about me to other people. He said, This man has a ministry of giving. I've not seen anybody who gives like him. So don't listen, oh. Listen, oh. You better hear this truth. I'm, I'm dragging you because all this, all you're begging from government, begging from your uncles, begging from everybody is not good. It's not good. I'm tired. It's not good. I'm tired. Beg from everybody. So that you get angry when they don't even answer you. You react as if they, they are owing you. They're, they're, you're not the one who give them money now. Why will you get angry with them? You know, when you, are, when you don't know how to give, you get angry. Say, so this is what I pray for. You know, if you give me money, say, for what? Are you the one who kept him in that seat? Leave them alone now. That's why we, if you don't know it, you will react. You get angry. See the way, you, my brother. You know, are you, are you handicapped? Find a way to get to know the truth. I shall a very raw story. Listen, and I'm going to go to practical. You know how I came out of poverty? I told myself truth. I didn't deceive myself. I told myself what? If you don't know something in an exam, and you buy barrel, does it make the, they give you mark? <laughs> At the end of the day, you will fail. If you don't know, you can be doing like this. Take the battle, scratch your eye, hold your paper. You, you don't mark your part. You don't know it. You don't know it. Don't think that you, that you wrote plenty of scabs does not mean that you. <laughs> if you don't know, don't know. That's how life is. That you come to church 50 times does not mean that if you know something. You go to the exam hall, you wrote 50 feet cap. Does that make you pass? <laughs> that you have been coming to church, in the church, does not mean that you know prosperity. You must get to know the truth. Let me tell you something. But anybody taught us prosperity himself. That's the headquarters of prosperity. He taught us, not church or Bible school. So that's, that is himself taught. <laughs> you will you fail in that kind of prosperity? You need to see most of my classmates. After he taught us, <laughs> 19, after Bible school, you had this story, listen carefully. That's how you know that. After Bible school, under, it's under pressure, you will know whether what has entered you. It's under pressure. That what? So I, I was calling to ministry, and then money was not coming. And there was a man I prayed for who life was better. I went to him. I said, sir, you know I'm to go to Padakura, but things are one kind. In his innocent way, he sat and he said, Pastor, I wish this money is there. They are owing me here, they are owing me here, they are owing me that. They are owing him. He said, if they can just pay some of the money, no, I can release some money. But now, it's well. Sympathize with me. Sympathy is not equal to truth. And I left. Then I sat and I told myself, I said, you don't know it. 
that this thing you did now is soliciting. I told myself, you don't know this truth, you don't know prosperity. It's to, you are begging from this man directly. Nobody was with me, nobody knew. I said, you don't know it. Which means the one they taught in Bible school is not enough. Because indirectly, under pressure, you are trying to scheme for money. So I shut the door. And I said, Lord, show me the secret of kingdom wealth. I don't want to solicit. I'm tired. And I read the book by Gloria Copeland. And she read the book. And I came out after seven days. I said, listen. I talked to my wife. I said, we can never be poor. And I can never beg. That was where I broke the backbone of begging and poverty. Please, I'm not telling you gimmicks. I'm telling you what my hand has what? Handled. Poverty is not good. And I'll tell you some of the consequences so that you get angry. Some consequences of poverty. Because if you don't get angry, you can't come out. All this I'm talking, you become a... Some consequences of what? Number one consequence is poverty is destructive. Poverty is what? He said the destruction of the poor is their poverty. So many of you are destroyed. Proverbs 10, 15. He said the destruction of the poor is what? <laughs> their poverty. Hello? It is the destruction of the poor is their, is their evil law. What? Second consequence, <laughs> get angry, say I'm getting angry, say I'm angry with poverty. Poverty is the penalty for laziness. Is the penalty for what? Less every lazy man. The first sign of a lazy person is poverty. The every lazy person. The first sign you see is what? Poverty is a sign of laziness. And we have the laziest people in the third world. If you come to Africa, they go to work in the morning, read paper in the government. Close. The people are so lazy in this part of the world. Your brothers who you are begging from the Western world, do they know? Do you know they do three, four jobs? Some of them. My, my brother cannot send me dollar. He doesn't sleep. Oh. They do so what they do: snow, winter, <laughs> summer. People are so lazy. People are so what? Do you know why people are going to politics here? Listeners. Sit somewhere, blue for money they will eat, take bribe. So poverty keep increasing. Poverty keep what? The society. Poverty is the penalty of what? Proverbs 6, 6 to 11. Go to the end. Number three. Poverty is the penalty for stinginess. Poverty is what? Poverty is the penalty for what? Stinginess. Every stingy man, look at his life. Poor people, they are stingy people. They are still at what? And yet what? There's that we tell them on a speed. It tells the word. But when you are poor, check your level of giving. You are very stingy. Proverbs 11, verse 24. I'm telling you the penalty. So when you're poor, look at your giving life. So Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. Message translation of 9, 6. A stingy planter gets a stingy crop, and a lavish planter gets a lavish crop. So stingy people. Hmm? So when you are see poverty, check your life. You are very what? Stingy. Stingy. I catch you. Number four. Poverty is the penalty for stubbornness. If you like, let them talk what they like. I'm not interested. Well, now nah, nah, let brother go preach. Now nah, make it a poor. That's why poverty has not left you. They tell you the truth, you will not apply the truth. I don't care what you can nah, nah. Okay, after you make all those shakara, you see back transport money. I'm telling you the truth, though. When you are stubborn, poverty will become your headmaster. Look at it. Proverbs 13, verse 18. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuses instruction. Is that, is that, poverty and shame shall be to him that refuses what? Yeah, the teachers say, nah, I don't believe in all these things. That's why poverty has not left you. So better be angry. Number five, because it was. Poverty is the penalty for get rich syndrome. All this puzzle scheme, this scheme, this scheme, uh, puzzle scheme. If you're getting involved in any scheme, careful. You're heading for poverty. That's not the way out. Gambling is not scriptural. What did you do? Calm, calm. Once you're going to, let me tell you, all this bet me, bet me, it's not scriptural. Don't go to betting. It's a, check, 
before our forefathers and our fathers, all pool players, have you seen any pool player who is responsible? Once you go into a betting, you're a senior brother of pool. You say, this bet is, a, is just a modern pool. Hope you know. How many of you met pool? How many of you met pool? You met pool. You, <laughs> have you seen anybody who played pool that was responsible? But anybody into a betting as an addict, you're a pool senior brother. It's only a modernized pool. Betting is a modernized what? Do you know that Christians who are going to eat and play it? Yeah, they believe that. Cut one. <laughs> it's a penalty to get rich. Poverty is the penalty for, for what? Get rich syndrome. That's why they keep duping most of you. I invested in this bank. My money lost. I don't, I'll be looking at you and laugh. Why would you invest 20,000 and expect 80,000? What your business would the man do to give you 80,000 for 20,000? If you know that you are just you two, bro, you and the man, two of you have a problem. So you invest 20,000 and someone says we'll give you 80,000. What do you sit down and think? We have kind of business in a depressed economy. Will you get 80,000 to give us profit? So if I want to invest, you know, they, they pay you 80,000 for 20,000. Bring. They say, bring, bring. Then after, if they bring another one out, boom, see what victim more. They say, bring, invest, invest. So, you can't invest in the kingdom of God, which is the most sure one. You see where I put it? The kingdom of God, which is the surest way of investment, you can invest. God's kingdom, which is the most authentic place of investment, you know, you can invest. There's no economy that can affect the kingdom of God. Yet, you say, hey, 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 it's more so, get where you go invest and you go double the money, double the money, double the money. Okay, have you, have you doubled now? You have doubled yourself out, upside down. <laughs> There's no investment in this world that can match the investment in the kingdom. It's the shortest form of investment. It's right here. But he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be no set. Proverbs 28, 20 B and 22. He that haste set to be rich is that that had an evil eye. When I say so, you think that before you say that, you see the way he's abused or see Bible. To read 22, you won't think that I'm the one who wrote it. He that hasted to be rich had an evil eye and considered not that poverty shall come upon him. Look at it. I, I'm not talking with that Bible. I'll see what I could. I'll put 20,000. I'll get 80,000. This is your problem. A, a miser in a hurry to get rich does not know that he end up broke. <laughs> Those are signs of poverty. Number six, poverty causes separation. Poverty causes what? Wealth makes many friends, but the poor is separated from his neighbor. Proverbs 19, verse 4. And number seven, people don't listen to the poor. People don't listen to what? Ecclesiastes 9, 13 to 16. Prosperity is a reward for obedience. Prosperity is a reward for what? Once you want to prosper, just obey whatever you hear. Even if you don't like it, obey the truth. If you be willing and what? You shall eat the good of the land. Isaiah 119. Oh! He said, and he saw the Lord his God. Psalm Chronicles 25. Isaiah, and the Lord prospered him. Just obey the truth and you will 